talking about the, the catch games before our game. Dave Fleming, Jessica Mendoza, Tim Kirk. Should we have smiles on our faces, and they're just totally legitimate because this is one of, if you love this game, this is one of the great days of the year. And, and I love this day. I mean, this entire tournament, it's so cool. But when the big leaguers get here, and two things, they become the fans. You see them taking the pictures. They want to meet all the players that are participating, and then they have fun. And most of the players, of course, have never been here before. Joe Musgrove told me when I was 12 years old, all we ever wanted to do was somehow get to Williamsport and play on national TV. And he goes, this is my first trip here. It's just as good as I thought it was going to be. Uh, Javi Baez already interacting with the kids. We'll see lots of those scenes during our game, during our telecast. So let's talk about our game, Mexico and Japan. Tim, we'll start with the team from Mexico that was really impressive in their opening round right. win. They shut out Canada 5 to nothing, and the kid to watch with Mexico is their catcher, Angel Castillo. Imagine Javi Baez as a catcher. <laughs> That's what it's like watching this kid. Plus, he's a soccer goalie, so watch his footwork. It's brilliant behind the plate, and he plays the accordion, so if they win, he <laughs> might play a few notes for us after the game. <laughs> we can only hope, right? And Team Japan, Jess, you got to see them up close and personal in an opening round win that was dominant to say the least. You know, we get here every year and even the Pirates, you want to watch their defense because they're so solid, but what they did on Friday against Italy, they just put on a hitting show. You see this team, they have the biggest kids that are here at the Little League World Series and they have some pop. Yuto Masaki was on fire, had a huge home run, a double and a single, but their entire lineup flamp is something that was completely showcased. You see the short game, the long ball, this Japan team is fun to watch. Yeah, so fun. And so a great game, plus all the interactions of the Cubs who are going to stick around. The Pirates really don't want to leave. They have to leave to start to get ready for Sunday Night Baseball, which will follow all the Little League action. So I think the Pirates are getting ready to say their goodbyes. The Cubs are sticking around. We've got Cubs who are going to join us on our broadcast. And, of course, it is Mexico and Japan. The Skippers going down the hill. Baseball coming up next. <laughs> The Little League World Series is brought to you by T-Mobile. Don't miss the first ever T-Mobile Little League Home Run Derby, August 18th, right here on ESPN. Come back here live to Williamsport. It's the 2019 Little League World Series, and on this first Sunday every year now, the Little League Classic caps off a terrific day of baseball. And how about that scene? You think that's meaningful for those kids from Japan? That's you, Darvish. Truly one of the great sporting heroes in that country. The kids got to meet him right before they take the field to start this game. They come from, the uh, kids from Mexico do, from uh, Guadalupe, a, a great baseball area just three miles outside of Monterrey, Mexico. It's a big city. It's a great place. Let's meet the kids from Guadalupe, brought to you by Office Depot. Mi nombre es Eric Vigil y mi jugador favorito es José Altuve. Mi nombre es Emiliano Garza y mi actor favorito es Jason Statham. Mi nombre es Ángel Reina y mi equipo favorito de béisbol es Elia Doyers. Mi nombre es Eugenio Hernández y mi cantante favorito es Marshmallow. Mi nombre es Alan Gutiérrez y mi emoji favorito es eh, Serio. Mi nombre es Sebastián Sauceda y mi cantante favorito es Post Malone. Mi nombre es Daniel Orozco, mi jugador favorito es José Altuve. Mi nombre es Carlos Moreno y mi comida favorita es el espagueti. Mi nombre es Jesús Saí Garza y mi jugador favorito es Javier Baez. Mi nombre es Santiago Leija y mi emoji favorito es Gafas de Sol. Mi nombre es Nicolás Villarreal y mi libro favorito es Harry Potter. Mi nombre es Ángel Castillo y mi equipo favorito es Chicago Cubs. Mi nombre es Elliot Sánchez y mi serie favorita son los Simpsons. Mi nombre es Marcelo Herrera y mi mollo favorito es La Cara Loca. All right, it's a great group. This is the winner's bracket. These are the teams that all won their first uh, round matchups here in Williamsport. So two teams that look great just a couple days ago play here on this Sunday, Mexico and Japan. And the Pirates, it's hard to say goodbye for these big leaguers. I mean, they don't want to go, do they? No, I mean, honestly, it's, yes, they have to go prepare for the game. We were talking about this in our meeting for the Sunday Night Baseball game tonight, literally saying, we remember most of the players, they never use the batting cage, they never do anything because all they're doing is enjoying the crowd, enjoying the moment. 
and it's a big game for the Cubs. I mean, the Cubs are right in the thick of the race, so it's a balancing act. But I think if you ask each and every one of those guys, just being here is a treat for them, and it's a treat for these little leaguers to get to play in front of the big leaguers. Yuto Kakeba is the starting pitcher for Japan. Angel Reina will lead off the shortstop for Mexico. Ball. And ball one to start the game. Mario Martinez is our home plate umpire. Mario from Albuquerque, New Mexico. So he wears the microphone. We'll hear his voice. And a good fastball there for strike one. And Dave, of course, something to keep an eye on is the infield defense by Japanese. I watched infield today. It is seamless the way they run it. You can tell a lot about a team by the integrity of the infield that they run, and nobody does it better than they do. The third baseman takes charge there, and right on cue, right on the money for out number one. You know, one thing that stands out to me, not just the technique, when the Japanese kids take infield, how loud they are. They talk, yes. they communicate. They communicate so well, and honestly, it's, it's there's a smoothness that you can tell they do it for hours and hours and hours. It's like they could do it in their sleep. So one away, Alan Gutierrez, the second baseman for Mexico. He comes up against Yuto, and we see the breaking ball for the first time. Jess, that's where the discipline comes in. They're such a disciplined team. Joe Musgrove told me, I bet they came to the park today in coats and ties. <laughs> that's a good line from Joe. I didn't know, nobody seemed to be enjoying himself more than Joe. He is such a free spirit. He's such a good dude, and he loves this. One and one the count here, just getting started. So we've got Little League Baseball for you. We're going to interact with uh, our big leaguers who are here. A ground ball to first, handled nicely by the kid they call Tai Tai, Taishi Kawaguchi. Two down. John Lester, you Darvish. It's so many of the Cubbies. Derek Holland is here, sitting with... Uh, some kids from Kentucky, right? Yep. Great Lake region. Two down. La last year, Jake Arietta sat in the crowd for about two extra hours talking to those kids about here's how you throw a slider. Those kids will never forget that the rest of their lives that a former Cy Young winner sat with us and showed us stuff. And I guarantee you during our telecast, we'll show some of that. We had the scene of Noah Syndergaard. Yes. Remember the I big was kid? Say, Noah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the pitcher who wanted to know how Syndergaard gripped his pitches. And the two of them, despite not speaking the same language, were communicating with each other. Language of baseball. Yep. That is one thing we find out here in Williamsport each and every year. Two down. Craig Kimbrell, that's big news tonight, huh? Yeah, that's a liner to center. And the first hit of the game is Sebastian Sauceda with a two-out single. I love Sebastian's story. To me, he epitomizes Little League Baseball. One year ago, Sebastian was cut from this team. Even though he's the fastest player on the team, he might be the best hitter. He's the third-place hitter. He's starting in center field. But he was not a confident kid, and he yeah. didn't make the team. And the coaches worked with him and worked with him, and here he is. He's one of their stars in Williamsport a year later. Yeah, but it also just shows you, despite the talent, how important that it is to believe in yourself. Yeah. And you see so many of these kids, they get down on themselves or they're, it's one way or the other how they react. And this is the age when you really figure that out. You think any Cubs speak Italian? <laughs> Oh. Maybe, maybe the guy we're going to talk to next speaks a little. Anthony Rizzo is going to jump on with us uh, at some point here. Chris Bryant and friends. I mean, I'm just impressed that Anthony Rizzo, I'm sure Theo Epstein was cringing somewhere watching Anthony Rizzo go down the hill. Oh, we're showing that again for sure. As soon as he gets on with us, I want to hear his him. technique. And no one was surprised that Joe Madden went down the hill yeah. because <laughs> that's who Joe Madden is. So it's one and two here in the top of the first after a two-out single. In the dirt, and a quick break for second. The throw is going to be late. So Sebastian Salceda, some daring base running there, moves himself into scoring position. He's confident now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and as soon as that ball went in the dirt, he took off. These two teams have met so many times over the years. And of course, it's different kids, different teams, but there is a whole host of shared history between 
these two countries in Williamsport. And a fastball st strike three swinging. Got to get the ball back and set it nicely on the mound. That's how they do it. And it's just such a great scene here for the little leaguers, for the big leaguers. We got so much more of this still to come from Williamsport. Welcome back to the 2019 Little League World Series here on ESPN. Of course, we're getting ready for the Pirates and the Cubs coming up a little bit later tonight. I got Elias Diaz of the Pirates here with me. He's from Venezuela. He's not just from Venezuela. He's from Maracaibo, where the team uh, from Venezuela is in this tournament. A ver, Elias. And I want to get a sense of just kind of how he shared with the kids. Has hablado ya con los niños de Maracaibo. ¿Qué les dijiste? Sí, eh, de verdad que compartí, compartí bastante con ellos durante el el traslado desde el aeropuerto hasta aquí y pues conozco a varios a varios niños y pudimos compartir pudimos compartir bastante. He said they've talked a lot especially on the bus ride over he was with a lot of the Venezuelan kids they uh, they got a good chance to catch up and it's a very small world not just uh, the baseball world but the Venezuelan baseball community so there's a lot of kind of strings attached. Te quiero preguntar get a sense of what this means to him uh, considering everything that's going on in Venezuela tomando en cuenta todo lo que ha pasado en Venezuela, ver estos niños disfrutando, ¿qué te hace sentir? Sabe, me, hace, me hace sentir muy feliz, muy contento de que ellos puedan estar aquí eh, en las pequeñas ligas. Esto es, es, para mí esto es como las grandes ligas de, la, de, la, de las pequeñas ligas, ¿sabes? De verdad que a pesar de todo el esfuerzo, que, de todas las cosas que están pasando en Venezuela, el esfuerzo que ellos han hecho ha sido muy grande y de verdad que por eso estoy muy contento de que ellos estén aquí. He says with everything that's going on in Venezuela, the effort that these kids have had just to get here has been immense, and he's uh, very, very proud and very happy to see them here. He says, this is the big leagues of the little leagues. Elias, muchísimas gracias, buena suerte, un placer. Guys, back to you. Well, thanks very much to both Sebastian and to Elias for uh, spending some time with us. Uh, the Pirates were here, the Cubs are here. We've got Mexico and Japan. Team Venezuela is an amazing story. Not a single parent able to get yeah. a visa to travel here is so complicated right now in Venezuela. So the only team that doesn't have its friends, family, parents, supporters here behind them. And yet they got a big win yesterday. We're going to see him again tomorrow. Well, to have Elias Diaz make the time, which all of the players are doing, but to make sure to find Team Venezuela because they don't have family. And like he just said, he's like, it's a small community when it's baseball. So he's like family to them. I imagine their hearts went through the roof when they were able to, to be around him. I think you're right. Marcelo Herrera starting for Team Mexico. Joe Nishizawa, who is the catcher. You know, it happens a lot here in Little League where the Japanese catcher is often a great all-around athlete, yes. a great runner, and it very often is a leadoff hitter. You'll see him not afraid to even lay down a bunt, which you don't see a lot of times, a little drag bunt from a catcher. Here's the 1-1. One, one. It's hit softly. We're going to get to see Joe move. But the fastball to first base from Santiago Aleja, who was the starting pitcher in game one, <laughs> showed off that arm on the first play of the game. So Santiago is going to play third base. The kid who played third in Mexico's opening round win, Marcelo Herrera, is the starting pitcher. And it is so important at this age for kids to play as many positions as you can. When you're not pitching, you should be playing shortstop or somewhere else. It will make you better at every other position by playing all over the field. And now's the time to do it. It doesn't hurt if your dream job's a neurosurgeon, too. <laughs> That's true. Uh, uh, two things I really like about Marcelo Herrera, his, his, the, the pitcher for Mexico. His dream job is a neurosurgeon, and he's a perfectionist. That is a good combo. <laughs> Very, yes. <laughs> if I, if I want a neurosurgeon, in. I want yeah. a perfectionist. And he's a big kid. He throws hard. He's also got a breaking ball. Oh, Picked. great stab. But that, I guarantee you that's going to get some applause from our big league players. Excellent play, Elliot Sanchez. Dave, I've said this for the five years I've come here. The skillful play, especially of the middle infielders, is absolutely breathtaking. I've seen some shortstops make some plays like that already here. Look at this. This ball's hit hard. And then watch him square up to throw. Absolutely terrific. So Elliot makes the uh, tremendous play with two down. Bases are empty for Daiki Kobari who is the center fielder. He takes a big cut. That might have gotten a piece of our catcher, Angel Castillo. Castillo, who is a character, to say the least. <laughs> He's my favorite player here at Little League. And there's always, I don't know, 
there's one Yamaguchi was my favorite last year from from yeah. Hawaii. Yep. But watching Castillo, just the emotions, right? And he's so intense. He loves the game. Chris Bryant doing a, a, an interview with somebody just a little younger than I am. That's <laughs> like a, a kid uh, reporter, a <laughs> young woman who's here in Williamsport getting a chance to talk to Chris Bryant. That's a pretty cool moment for her. He's, he's been very long-winded, Chris Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's easier when the reporter uh, I think is a so kid. Too. I do, too. It's hard to give short answers. Ball! Outside, one and two. He's going to try to sell that one. Yep. Oh, he's going to try <laughs> I mean, to sell a lot. First of all, where he's at in his stance, where he gets all wide, gets behind it, and then he tries to bring it back over, holds it, holds it even after it's called a ball. Are you sure? I'll give me another look. He's got that look. Castillo catches like he's like 30 years old. Yeah. He's been doing this forever, and he loves being back there. And I've found the personality of a lot of these kids is the catcher because he's involved in every single play. And I love the point you made. He's a soccer goalie. He takes pride. Nothing's getting by me. Right. Yep. Got him swinging. So Japan goes down in order, and when we come back here for the second inning, we're going to talk to a guy who once was a little eager and today is kind of acting like one. Anthony Rizzo will be with us right after this. There's, in fact, really every single one of them was a little eager. At some point, we got all the pictures to prove it. Uh, some of the Cubs who are with us, yes. including that guy who somehow <laughs> just has hardly changed a bit, Anthony Rizzo. Can you remember those Little League days? Yeah, they were the best. Uh, this brings all the memories back, seeing all the kids running around and having Having just you know, not a care in the world being here and riding down the hill earlier was uh, I, I noticed special. you did that. How was that? It was awesome. You know, as a kid, I've always wanted to come here. I've dreamed of coming here um, and riding down that slide and the hill. And when we got here and we were up there, I'm like, Rossi, I'm riding down this, baby. <laughs> He's like, so. Did you get cool. a text from Theo afterwards? No, I th <laughs> a couple other guys supposedly did it too. So uh, You weren't the only one. Yeah. Uh, nice yeah. technique too. Have you thought about how you're going to ride? No, down? I honestly it was just a go with the flow thing. So, well, what has your interaction with the kids been like so far? Really cool. We had uh, the Kentucky team, Canada, and Italy on our bus riding over from the airport. So we had them all sing the national anthem on our bus. Uh, had them hear their team rallies and uh, almost like a little rookie hazing. Yeah, sing your yeah, fight yeah. Song, yep. something like that. Yeah, That's sing good. the fight songs. We had a couple of our guys sing "Go Cubs Go." I sung uh, "Center Field" to some of them. So <laughs> it was a, it was a fun ride over. What was it like with Italy? I imagine they gravitated towards you. You played in the 2013 World Baseball mm -hmm. Classic for Italy. Was that pretty cool? Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, hearing them all say "Rizzo, Rizzo," <laughs> you know, just all the accents, and uh, they actually nailed the the bus the the Christian Christian uh, nailed the national anthem on our bus. So oh, really? They, they took the prize home for the, the best team on you the bus. You said you were Google Translating, just trying to communicate yeah. with them? Yeah, one of the kids I was sitting next to, uh, the, the language barrier was a little tough, so I started just Google Translating, asking what grade he was in, who his favorite player was. I so. think you looked really good in that uniform. <laughs> Italian. No, it was, the World Baseball Classic was, was, uh, was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed playing it. Uh, Anthony and his teammates here in Williamsport. Of course, you're going to play a game later tonight, but I have to imagine the, the idea of coming over here and, and being with all these kids, not quite your normal pregame preparation, not quite how a, a game day goes, but i got to imagine you guys are excited to do all this. Yeah, this is, you know, you don't know. And these kids are making some good plays. Anthony, that's two plays by the shortstop in this game so far. They're so uh, advanced, up the middle, defensively yeah. up the middle. The catchers too, but uh, it... You know, you don't really know with the flow of the season. Once we get here, then you start finding out everything we're doing. And it's just been a lot of fun already. We've only been here for about an hour or two, but it's been amazing. What were you like when you were 12 years old? Were you the biggest kid on the field? Were you, you can say this. Were you the best kid on the field, better than everyone else? Um, we had a lot of fun. Just I always remember my dad giving signs, and his signs were the easiest signs to remember. If he wanted you to steal, he would scream, steal! Yes. If he wanted you to bunt, he would tell, bunt! <laughs> and a lot of the other teams uh, and coaches didn't like it because we wouldn't really practice and we would just have fun. And 
we would play wherever we wanted and me and my best friend Christian had him play if I was catching or he was catching we'd throw it off the backstop if someone was on third and we'd just get them out of home so <laughs> we had a lot of fun what but, other uh, sports did you play because I feel like that's one of the biggest things with a lot of these kids is being asked to just commit to one but how important it was to play one yeah one. It, it well luckily for me my my parents always whatever I wanted to do yeah you know soccer football flag football oh. Play tackle as well, um, hockey, all basketball. We played it all. So, and it was never let's go to the park and play baseball. It was me asking my dad, "Hey, can we go do this and that?" And uh, and my mom, and they always let us do it. So it was the freedom to be able to do whatever we wanted as far as playing sports was was awesome for me. The uh, Mexican pitcher wants to be a neurosurgeon one day. Did you ever think about that when you were twelve? Not a neurosurgeon, always a lawyer because I love arguing right. and love uh, <laughs> debating. So, but a neurosurgeon at twelve—that's good for Ambitious. him. Ambitious, aim high. Well, you mentioned being with those uh, Italian kids on the bus driving here to uh, the Little League complex. This was last night. Gabriele Chirinda. He is uh, like your biggest fan, I think. He's the first baseman. Nice. We catch. wanted to show you the catch because I thought he did a pretty good Anthony Rizzo there. I love that. Good for him. That is awesome. I mean. The plays that we see on TV, there he is right oh, there. Yeah. Oh, the cubby hat. You know, and he came, now I see the face. He came up to me, he told me in broken English that I was his favorite player. I was like, thank you, thank you, Prego, Prego. <laughs> <laughs> he looks a little like you when you yeah, were a kid. The Italian, the Italian uh, uh, style. The uh, gene pool runs deep. Uh, yeah, he's just a terrific kid. That team, hey, uh, they don't have a whole lot of baseball in Italy, and yet those kids are trying to learn the game, and they watch you guys. They use all the technology we have to watch big league games from back at home. Anthony, what did Joe Madden tell you about preparing for the day to, A, have fun with the kids, but also we got a game tonight? Well, I think that as a professional, you kind of know how to separate them. Um, we'll get to the field pretty early and have, be able to rest and relax a little bit. And uh, we have an off day tomorrow to, uh, on the back end of this road trip. So you could fight through days like this. It's not really a fight. It'll be be pretty cool to uh, play. What I just found out too is all kids. It's gonna be all kids in the stadium, yeah. oh, which yeah. is amazing. So it's gonna be like a uh, a minor league game when it's camp day and all the, all the 11 a.m. game. But <laughs> all the shrieks. Yeah, it'll be it'll be great. Well, there's uh, only 2,500 people, so that's the intimacy of literally like 2,400 of those 2,500 are kids. Yeah, we're. I, We'll have to get on board the Pirates, too. We'll just have to hype the kids up all the time with two strikes and two outs. And when people make plays, we'll have to hype them up and get them real loud. High-five a kid after you make a grab at first. Yeah. I think they'll go along with it. That was a swing. That's strike three. Put the ball down on the mound very nicely. Put the ball. you got to go get ready for a game. Cool. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks. We'll see you tonight. Thank you. Pirates going to get ready for the game. Anthony Rizzo, what a great job he and his teammates are doing here. With all the kids here at the Little League World Series, we'll be right back. Thanks again to Anthony Rizzo for uh, giving us some great time. Uh, Joe Madden and his uh, guys are underneath here at Volunteer Stadium. Maybe catch a little shade. It is hot today in Williamsport. Just a gorgeous day and a great day for this sport. There's Anthony, who is sort of Mr. Popular right now, going down the hill. Wasn't that cool? He told us he used to watch as yeah. a kid and didn't just dream about being here as a player, dreamed about Grabbing a piece of cardboard. And, and we I, did it. I love, too, because we haven't seen, have we seen players do that in the past? I mean, it was it was really unusual to have as soon as they got here. Literally, get off the bus. I'm going to the hill. Come on. Yep. Joe Madden, I mean, it doesn't shock me at all. It's something we haven't seen. And by the way, I was in charge of showing Jess how to go down the hill two years ago. And I told her, whatever you do, don't go head first. You might get hurt. And, of course, she went head first. Not even listening to me. No. Shocker. I think Jess uh, felt like it's she could fun. handle that. It's more fun that way. You get a running start and just, like, shoot on down. You guys think you can tell me what to do? Uh -uh. <laughs> Ball one to Yuto Kakebo, who is a big power hitter. He drove in five runs in Japan's opening round win. A scoreless game, bottom of the second, Mexico and Japan. And one of the other great things about having Anthony with us and watching the other Cubs sitting in the stands watching this game, just the couple defensive plays, his yeah. his immediate reaction like, to wow, watching right. these kids. Mid-sentence reaction. Stop what I'm saying. That was really good play. That is hit high and deep to left field, and it is gone. Some big league power from Yuto Kakeba.
One nothing Japan. My goodness. That thing was just crushed. Uh, he's the biggest and the strongest kid on the team. And here he gets that ball out front a little. No stride whatsoever. Head down, head still. See you later. I saw a lot of this at the Home Run Derby yesterday. These kids are really strong. I think that's the longest home run we've seen so far in Williamsport. No doubter. Just how strong he is. Timmy, you said it. I mean, no stride. Like, literally just picked up the heel, put it down. So he's got two. Do we still have just the one combined on the U.S. side in all the games that have been played? Maybe I've lost track today. There's a lot going on today. Well, that's a 182-pound kid with some serious skills. You put those two together, you're leaving the yard. I'm kind of sorry that Anthony wasn't here with us right? to react to that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring him back. Yeah, that was Anthony Rizzo-like. So Japan has oh, love, the one That's my lead. favorite right there, reenacting it with your teammates, oh, right? Yeah. I mean, we all have been there. You're a kid, and it's like, yeah, I got the pitch, and then I did this, and then they did this, and I threw my bat. <laughs> You got what, what fun is it if you can't relive it? Tell the story. Ritsu Nishikawa, who was a pitcher in game one. Ben's back out of the way from that one. And another multi-sport kid, and Jess, you're right. At this age, it's imperative that you play multiple sports. You play basketball, you play soccer, you play football. It will make you a better baseball how player and Anthony vice versa. List? And it was like how six. When we start telling a 10-year-old to specialize and only play baseball, sorry, big mistake, common denominator of every big leaguer I've ever met, multi-sport star in high school. That's how you last, honestly. So it is still fun. You can have a grin like Anthony Rizzo has when he plays the game. 2-2, Two -two. and he strikes out on a ball in the dirt, picked up by the catcher, Angel Castillo. Two down. I think Anthony started a trend. Oh, he, he wore the white shoes, man. You got to protect those. <laughs> I think he'll get another pair. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably true. Oh, that's great. Oh, oh, oh and you got a pitcher going down? Oh, gosh. Theo really is <laughs> holding his breath. What's my team doing? Let them have fun. They don't oh. get to be kids very often. I love it. You know, big leaguers, they play a kid's game. They're so privileged to have the ability and the determination to get to where they are and to play a game for a living. But it's just a fact that you don't often get to really act like a kid. There's so many demands. Today is a day to be 12 again. Look at his face. Look at his face. That's what I love. When's the last time you think he <laughs> felt like that? Oh. Uh, he doesn't get that face when he looks at a slider. I can promise you that. He does not. Two and one to Yuto Misaki. On this kid's bio, it said if he wins the lottery, he's going to build a batting cage in his house, which is not a bad idea. And for all these kids who love to hit, he's not the I only love, one that's thinking I love that, that way. It's in his house. A lot of times it's in the backyard. Yeah, not in the backyard. Yeah. No, I'm going to put it like next to the kitchen. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need that dining room table. <laughs> Get that out of here. Grab some lunch. Take a few hacks. He, he may not need the, the batting cage because he had a grand slam <laughs> in their first game. <laughs> Do we have a traffic jam on the way to the ballpark for the Pirates? Pretty good cut there. Okay, so... Anthony is watching our telecast and watching his teammates. All right, so we... we, we he's, uh, that's pretty cool. Good breaking ball for strike three swinging. Two down. They want to watch the games. Two outs. Here in the bottom of the second, we've had a home run. We, 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 do, we, we really do. So they have all they have two cop cars in front of them. Yeah. How's how's Can that? Can they get uh, in that right lane? How's that escort going? <laughs> 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 I'd be asking some serious questions. That ball is hit high into right center field, but not quite deep enough. Sebastian Sauceda makes the catch for out number three. 
This is what happens when you go down the hill. He's a man of the people, Chris Bryant. Sign those autographs, one nothing Japan. With Nicholas Villarreal of the Pirates, uh, Chris Archer and his teammates now are in a traffic jam. <laughs> Williamsport is a little different town today than it usually is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the five mile commute. <laughs> It is. It, it's literally oh, five wonder. miles from here to Bowman Field, where they will play the Little League Classic tonight. I want to get some Japanese gear. I mean, they, I love walking away, trading with some of the kids, but... They have great gear. Oh. Well, I think anytime you have different letters and language, you rock a hat. Little League baseball is pretty cool. Yeah, did you notice some of the Pirates came away with the, the, the <laughs> headbands? Still the yeah. left lane. <laughs> <laughs> I think... If Joe Madden is watching our coverage right now, he needs to say, hey, I think we can find a different way to the ballpark. Maybe if we pull out, we can figure out what's going on here. Oh, it's just we just got to wait our turn. So it's literally a, a stoplight. Okay, follow the rules. Strike one swinging from Yuto Kakeba, who's got power at the plate, and he's also got power on the mound. He launched a big home run to put Japan ahead 1-0. It's inning number three. Carlos Moreno. So we have a neurosurgeon, and when this kid grows up, he wants to be a paramedic. Okay. So on the same team, we're covered here. So if the 62-year-old keels over in the booth, I want you to call Carlos to come up. <laughs> it is a little warm up here, Tim. You doing okay? I'm fine. Okay, great. <laughs> quick answer. Fourth strikeout of the day for uh, Yuto Kakeba. Hey, hey, Carlos, see... see the, the pitcher, Marcelo, he wants to be the neurosurgeon. He's a perfectionist. Carlos wants to be the paramedic. His nickname is Wild Thing. Those those don't sync up quite as well as perfectionist neurosurgeon. Now walking in yeah. to do brain surgery. Wild Thing. <laughs> exactly. Now that is not what I want my uh, surgeon or paramedic to be nicknamed. Nicholas Villarreal is the pinch hitter. Nicholas is the kid who was playing catch with Chris Archer. Right to first and scooped by Taishi Kawaguchi. Two down. They're All moving. Right. Look at that. Just a traffic right. light. Well, they, they have done such a great job over at Bowman Field, and hopefully everybody watching us now will watch tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern, the uh, Little League Classic Cubs and the Pirates. Jess will be there. Tim, you'll be over there. I'll be there as a fan. But, I mean, it's an actual big league game, a pennant race game with the Cubs involved. And the yeah. field, you know, even though there are not that many people there, it's a tiny little minor league park, historic little minor league park. Totally big league ready, the playing surface and the field. Oh, they did such an awesome job of getting the entire place ready. But what I love about it is that it's so intimate. And you get all these big league players and the fact that everyone in the stands is a kid. I mean, even us doing the game. Flem, we're sitting like five rows up behind home plate with like a bench. I mean, yeah, there's I, no booth. It's it's awesome. I did notice that. It's not going to be your normal night tonight. No. <laughs> and that's a good thing. It's, it'll be great. Yeah. Murray Cook is the groundskeeper there, and they bring him in for all these events, and they will not let a big league team play on a substandard field, and that guy is a magician when it comes to putting anything together. He went to Fort Bragg. He goes to all the places that need a new field. Murray Cook puts it together. Great job, Murray. We appreciate your efforts making this possible. We already know. I mean, this is a tradition that is continuing. We already know which teams are coming here next year. We're going to do the Little League Classic again, and hopefully again and again and again. The Red Sox will be here next year taking on the Orioles. Now that, I, f I love that we're going to get the American League here, and I, I, I love that it's just going to be a different group of players that have not been here, because that's the thing I look for every time. Take a look at Bowman Field now. Quiet now will not be quiet a little later this afternoon and this evening. Yeah, the, the, the Pirates and the Phillies have, have alternated being the, quote, hosts of this Little League Classic now three years in a row. So next year will be the first time we have American League teams here. And Baltimore is not far from here. It's an easy trip. It'll be great. The MLB folks, I'm sure they were just thrilled to hear from me and my suggestions, but... I suggested let's work on getting the Angels, the Angels yes. here because you have Mike Trout, who I know would light everybody up. Shohei Otani for Team Japan. the uh, international side would be a great star. I think just even just those two together would be such a big deal for these kids. It's a great idea. Why wouldn't they listen to you? Yeah, Mr. Commissioner, to. that one's on me. 
Brought to you by Dave Fleming. I, 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 there, you could make a case for so many different teams. That is strike three call right there on the inside corner. So this day of Little League Baseball from Williamsport, of all the great scenes leading up to that, that's where Jess will be tonight. Cubs, Pirates, 7 Eastern, right here on ESPN. one nothing Japan leading Mexico here at Volunteer Stadium in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Just up the hill at Lombardy, our own Sebastian Salazar is with a very special guest. Look, when we started this Little League World Series, we asked every kid who their favorite player was. They almost all said Javi Baez, and here he is. Hey, when you hear that the kids love you that much, what does that make you feel? Oh, great. You know, great to, to have so many followers, you know, this, this young. And, you know, the, the, the way they, they see the game, that, that I have fun with it. I know you guys are accustomed to pretty nice stadiums, but when you see this, what do you think? Um, it, it reminds me of, you know, the days that I was young and... I came to, to tournaments like this, and but we didn't have the opportunity to be around players from the from the major league. So I think it's a like really cool experience, and you know, trying to learn some some stuff from the kids. Have you got a chance to talk to any of those kids yet? And what have those interactions been like? Yeah, um, you know, we, we we came on the bus with them, so it was it was really fun. You know, their their question was obviously always fun. If if I, if we play here. Who was my favorite kid? And it was it was it was cool to be to be around them and you know, make them make them see how how everything works with us. Awesome, Javi. Thanks for the time, man. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, guys. Thank. And the glasses. What right? The shades. <laughs> Joe I mean, he just Joe, Joe screams, "Cool kid." He's the best. Joe Madden calls him the most watchable player in the yeah. big leagues, and he is defensively the way he throws, the way he hits, of course, and with the personality with which he plays. We should have more guys like Javi ba Baez, and it's not a coincidence these kids love this guy. Yeah, Sebastian referenced it. We pull all the players who come here every year. Who's your favorite major league player? Player, and it was kind of a landslide this year. Javi Baez, above and beyond everybody. I love that Jeter oh. still gets in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> Third. That's ball four, so Japan draws a walk here in the bottom of the third, leading one nothing. David, David Ross told us yesterday that he's going to bribe one of the kids next year to put down his favorite baseball player, David Ross, <laughs> on the questionnaire. Uh. Beck, how do you spell that? <laughs> Watch the short game come to life for Japan. I feel like this is what they do such a great job of. What a beautiful bunt that was, and there was a little confusion as to who was going to cover. The play was backed up, so it doesn't cost Mexico a run yet, but two in scoring position for Japan. Dave, you're right. That's the key part here. The right fielder is backing up this play. Tell me if this happens in the big leagues. Answer, no, and that kid is right there in case... They airmail the first baseman, which is what just what happened there. Fundamentals. I mean, as boring as that sounds, I mean, Japan sure. nails them every time. And one of the things you will see a lot more. Concéntrense en los siguientes bateadores. Cero, cero y dos. Tenemos correo en primera y en segunda. Está bien. Concéntrate en los siguientes. Te estás quedando alto en estos picheos. Relájense. Tienen que hablarse en la primera base. Listo. Si se cuadra para el squeeze play, vas a jugar cerca tú. Cuadro corto. Estos son muy dados. Agarrar corto el bate y poner la bola en juego para que no te esté bate. Entendido? Concentrados. Pónganse listo con lo que viene. No me dejen solo Marcelo. Mande. Amagas la tercera y vas bajo para primera base. Tenemos que cerrar aquel hombre de tercera. Está bien. Vamos a ver. Vamos Marcelo. All right. So a little mechanical uh, tweaks for Marcelo Herrera, the pitcher. A couple little defensive assignments, and then mostly just a message of time to focus, time to concentrate. Still very much a game. But at the Little League level, when you execute a bunt properly, a walk and a bunt can turn into a big rally, as it has here. Second and third, nobody out for Japan. And now the top of the order comes up. So this is the recipe for a big inning. Joe Nishizawa, second at bat for him. Want to know. I watched infield today with Clint Hurdle, whose number one thing is respect the 90. Do not give up 90 feet to anyone. And here they just gave him up. Of course, it would be respect the 60 on this level. Big cut for strike one. It's a good tagline. Just tweak it a little bit. <laughs> Respect the 60. <laughs> I like it. And it's a great, it's really actually a great message 
every 90 feet, every 60 feet at this level is important. That one is hit way up there into right center field. Sebastian Sauceda couldn't catch it. It drops, and the throw to second is a little bit late. One run is in. Owada scores, and now it's 2-0 Japan. All right, so not like this really matters, Dave, but this is where you get a sacrifice fly while you reach on an error, because clearly he gets a sacrifice fly on that, even though this is going to be scored an error because he's got he's to catch this ball. But I think he lost it a little bit in the sun, and I think he heard the right fielder coming. That ball's got to be caught. Yeah. Well, it is bright sunshine. You got the backdrop that you're not used to at a Little League field. Yuto Inaba is now going to hit, and Team Mexico is trying to hang in this game now. With some good hitters coming up. That one goes to the backstop right over top of the hitter. And that'll score another run. And just this is the strength of the Japanese team. They don't make any mistakes. You make mistakes against them, and they will crush you, as we're seeing in this inning. They just put on pressure, and, and they do it with the simplicities of the game. And we've seen the long ball, which a lot of times you'll see Japanese hitters come here and not always hit home runs because they will just put the ball in play, move 60 feet by 60 feet, turn left. They put that pressure on the defense and then ultimately on the pitcher. So it's 3 nothing now with still a runner out there at third and still no outs. Good pitch right there on the corner. It's 1-1. One one. Timmy, when I would play, we would play in Japan every year, and one of the things that always surprised me is how relentless they were in trying any way to get another 60 feet. They would steal home. They would do a squee uh, hit and run with a runner at third. A little snap throw. He almost picked him off. The throw ended up being dropped. And I know the American big leaguers who go play in Japan. For a night game, they usually get to the park at like 9 o'clock in the morning and start drills and everything else. They take breaks during the day, but they're at the ballpark at 9 a.m. for a 7 p.m. game. And that's how much work goes into getting ready. I talked with the coaches, Timmy, on Friday and just kind of asked him. And that's one of the big things you talk about is the amount of hours that are put in for these Japanese players. So you see the Cubbies headed over to Lamedy next door. They're getting ready to participate in the... Uh Pre-game ceremonies, the starting lineups and whatnot, just as the Pirates did here at Volunteer before this game. Big breaking ball, call the ball. And again, Joe Madden grew up in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, which is an hour and a half from here. He's never been to Williamsport, and Joe's been everywhere. So he was so looking forward to this, and we've seen already how much he's enjoyed it. Full count, three and two. And he got him swinging with the fastball, so that's a big first out. Location, perfect dot. Outside corner, gets a swing and miss. And you look at the mechanics, exactly what his coach came out and said, drive with that shoulder, leave with the shoulder, follow through with the back. Beautiful strikeout. And we were talking about Javi Baez and why he is the most watchable as with Joe Maddens. He's the most watchable, most fun to watch player in big league baseball. It's not just the power and the speed and the flair and the way he wears his uniform. It's little stuff like tag plays. We've heard from a lot of little leaguers. They wanted to ask Javi about tagging Thanks. and base running. And I, I don't know if you all saw our first game today, Curacao against South Korea. We found a kid who is the Javi Baez of Little League. I mean, he, and, and this kid, the, the, the shortstop for Curacao, his name is Curly Martha. Now watch this tag play on a pickoff at second. Throw not great. With the dive. The dive, the reach back, back all in one motion, you. in full speed, just tremendous to watch. And it wasn't the only time he did something like that. That's a little base hit into right center field. And testing the arm of the center fielder. The throw is late. A hustle double for Daiki Kobari to knock in a run. And Jess, there's your point again. P pushing the action. Base hit to left center, right center. He says, I'm going to second on this. Throw me out. Let's but see he, what you can do. He's going to second out of the box. I mean, that's the thing. The whole play is in front of him. And these kids are 12 years old, 11 years old. And that's something you don't just know. That is something you practice. That's something you, as soon as you make contact, are thinking. Otherwise, you don't do it. 
that's a Javi Baez kind of play. Did you see Javi bat left-handed the other day? I did. Yeah. yeah, I did. And you know he's ambidextrous, so he can, he can throw, can throw with hands. his left hand. He eats and writes with his left hand. Really important thing to have. And that left hand is dexterous like that. You tag better, you make plays better because your glove hand is a really good working hand. Part of this is the strategy, uh, conveying that to uh, Marcelo. So he's setting up his defense. So the pitching change coming up for Mexico. Japan has surged ahead 4-0. The Cubs are up the hill at Lamedy. We'll be back right after this. All right, so one more Little League game to go, aside from the one that we're playing right here at Volunteer, and they are still in the pregame ceremonies. The team from Hawaii is uh, getting high-fived by many of the members of the Cubs, so that's just up the hill at Lamedy. That game will be on ABC, and the telecast essentially starting now. 4 nothing Japan here on the international side here on ESPN. And Mexico making a pitching change. Jesus Garza takes over. He's just 11 years old, his favorite team. The Chicago Cubs. Hi. And Dave, he's 4'11", weighs 104 pounds, and he's throwing hard. So any little kid out there who wonders, can I play if I'm a little undersized? Let's watch him. This is a God-given thing, being able to throw a baseball, no matter how big or, or small you are. This kid can really throw. He's also facing a hitter who is twice his size. <laughs> Yuto Kakeba, who has already hit two home runs in Williamsport. I believe he's going to be swinging to try to hit a third. And you're right. Good hard fastball from Jesus. Dave, in the home run derby yesterday, I must have seen three kids bigger than this kid. And that's how big and strong they make them these days, 12 years old. And were they hitting them as far as Yuto hits them? That's not hit very far. Nice, nice. pitch and Slide a really catch. nice catch. Yeah, they hit, they hit balls as far as yesterday as that home run. It was amazing. One of the kids, let's watch this catch here. Timmy, you were talking about playing multiple positions, important of just being an athlete. Kyle Peterson would be happy to see this pitcher, Jesus Garza, coming off the mound, reading it, a little slide catch. No big deal. <laughs> Pitchers are athletes. And he's a midfielder in soccer. Yep. You better be a good athlete to run the entire game midfield in soccer. Mikuto Doi hits here for Japan. I can't ever remember a year at the Little League World Series with better pitchers' defensive plays. We've seen just one after another. Diving stops, sliding catches. That one is hit to shallow left center, fighting that sun. Elliot Sanchez just couldn't see it. And that will allow another run to come in to score. Five-nothing Japan. Well, there's two things, Flem. It's it's the sun, but it's also the ability to have to run, knowing another fielder's there, and track the ball at the same time. If you watch Sanchez, as he's going back, he loses a little bit in the sun, but he's also trying to figure out where he's at on the field. And at the end there, he loses it, just tries to kind of almost go for cover. Yeah. That's a good point. You know, we've seen some outfield defenses this year in Little League play much more shallow than in the past. Against Team Japan, I... Not quite so sure you can always do that. Maybe with a different team, different configuration, maybe the left fielder comes in and just makes that play. Going to get a runner for Japan at first base. So the special pinch runner, that's uh, Ritsu Nishikawa. Ritsu is the kid who, I mean, you learn so many things from the international side of this Little League World Series, and most of these kids don't speak English. So we asked all of the Japanese kids, but Ritsu in particular, you know, you have any dreams? What do you want? And, and his answer literally was, I want to live the American dream. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> well, this is a pretty good start right I, here. I would say this is about at the top of the list of a lot of folks who live here. Yuto Misaki, I think that's a that's a lot of kids and grown-ups and big leaguers. I jam out yeah. for games, for doing games. <laughs> I like to sing Playing, to you, Flynn. Yeah, I've, I've <laughs> really enjoyed that so far today. 
Ground ball base hit. <laughs> uh, we were going through the full playlist. Tried to throw behind the runner, uh, Ritsu Nishikawa. So a four-run inning here for Japan and still going. This will be the ninth hitter to come up in the inning, Taishi Kawaguchi. Man, he's already got, what's he got around his neck? I mean, yeah. backwards cap. He's not enjoying this at all. <laughs> this was made for Joe. That one popped up. Castillo, the catcher, right there to make the catch. That's that pretty good. That's beautiful for a 12-year-old to recognize where that ball is, call everyone off. Love it. <laughs> Come on, Joe! Jeez, oh, he wants another Joe. one. <laughs> he wants another try. Sorry. Nope, you only get one. Today, major leaguers present and maybe future get together in Williamsport, connected by common dreams as the whole world watches. For the kids, it's a day to get close to their idols. For the big league players, it's a time to recall and give back to the game they love. This is the Little League Classic. Well, you don't really need words to describe how great that is. The Cubs, who have uh, participated in the pregame ceremonies up at Lombardy, they've played catch, they've slid down the hill. Uh, they have uh, just taken this whole scene in. And now, I guess, it's time to go get ready for a big league ball game. I mean, it's still, I, I, I say it over and over again. This is, we've, we've done it now for several years. Th this is a game that counts. And tonight, this is a true pennant race game. The Cubs are right in the middle of a race. And Jess was saying earlier, the Cubs are in a position here where they have to win, unlike really any other team that's played in this class. This is an important game tonight. Good swing on the first pitch here in the fourth inning from uh, Jesus Garza who is now the pitcher for Mexico. Yeah, I'm interested to see, because I feel like this is the third year of this, and I do feel like this is going to be one of the more meaningful games that we've seen here because the Cubs' kind of sense of urgency right now to get some consistency with their wins. Um, and in the past, you know, last year was the Phillies and Mets. I mean, really, like we were talking about how the batting cages never get used. A lot of the times the players are kind of almost just kicking it in the stands with the fans, which is what you want. I'm wondering how we see that balance yep. tonight with the Cubs knowing that this is a very important game for them. Well, so much of the story around the Cubs has been they can't win away right. from Wrigley. So does this count as a road game? Maybe <laughs> maybe Bowman Field will feel a little more like home. The friendly confines of <laughs> Bowman Field. It's about as old as Wrigley, almost. Has a great pitch right on the outside corner for strike three. This is what I feel like Japanese pitchers do so well is dot the outside corner. And you look at Nishikazawa behind the plate where he's set up, doesn't even move his glove. You don't see that very often in Little League. It, it is, it's a great point. It's the combination, the pitching execution, and the catching. And we see it year after year. All that practice pays off. And now we're going to see a little strategy. That 50 pitch threshold and a five run lead. Yuto Kakeba did his job. So Japan is going to make a pitching change. And we're going to figure out exactly where everybody's going to go while we have a moment and they make their changes. Let's uh, welcome in Sebastian Salazar. Guys, speaking of moments, big moment for this Japanese team before the game when they got to meet you, Darvish. I mean, you should have seen some of the kids. They were literally bouncing with excitement. Standard stuff, right? He wished them good luck, told them he'd be rooting for them. But the gang from Chofu, man, they said, no, no, we, we need you to put that in writing. You so they had them sign their supporters flag. It hangs in their dugout every game. Basically, anybody who's anybody, friends, family, neighbors who supports this team has signed it. And now this team from Tokyo can add you Darvish's name to the long list of folks cheering him on. Well, there have been a lot of great stars in the history of Japanese baseball, a lot of them, and many of them have come over and played in Major League Baseball. But close to the top of the list of most famous athletes in the history of Japan, you Darvish. I think Ichiro's got to be first. Yeah, and I you do Darvish too. is maybe second. Maybe I mean, so. And he got here. He's coming here at a perfect time. He hasn't walked anyone since July the 23rd. Last six starts, two walks. 63 strikeouts. He is dealing now. 
and these kids were really thrilled to see him today. Well, he's got the Little League thing going. Let's throw strikes. He's doing it. In uh, Major League Baseball, Yu Darvish, Shohei Otani, who may, may be challenging Yu Darvish for that title of most famous current athlete from Japan. Tanaka, you got the, the well, I, I, mean, I was going to say old-timers. <laughs> Hijiro and Hideki Matsui, not that long ago. A lot of these kids remember those guys even from their Still great playing Still listing them days. as their favorite. I, I do sure. think there is a new relatability, though, now with Shohei Otani that he brings and the fact that he can pitch and hit. Obviously, he's out this year with pitching and still hitting because of Tommy John surgery that he had last year. But for these kids, we i mean, we just saw a pitching change and you move to another position and you're picking up a bat and you're hitting. I mean, that's all they know. And Shohei Otani still shows that useful part of the game where you can do both. And I'd like to see more of it. Dave, I think the Angels should come here with Trout and Otani. What do you think about I, that? I totally agree. What a great idea, Tim. Thank you. Ritsu Nishikawa <laughs> is the pitcher. This is the guy who said, I mean, I just I find it astonishing. He lives 5,000 miles from the west coast of the United States, and his idea for us was, I want to live the American dream. And he's on the mound in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, in front of his family and his friends, and meeting you, Darvish. If that's the American dream, he's doing a pretty darn good job of it. So he takes over with one out and nobody on. His second pitching appearance of this Little League World Series. So one to know the count. Sebastian Salceda on the ground, up the middle. Base hit, he's two for two. Mexico has two hits. Sebastian has two hits. Thank goodness he made the team. We have a sideline reporter and a player named Sebastian in the same game. That is a fact. We have a sideline reporter and a booth analyst who went to the same high school. Did you know that Sebastian Salazar no. and Tim Kirchner went to the same high school? Yes, we did. Walter Johnson High School. Of course, I went there 60 years after he did, but that's hardly the that's point. Exaggerated. That's exaggerated. And we, wear, we both wear a small size <laughs> shirt, and we both drink Diet Mountain Dew, which is none of this is good. Except for Walter Johnson. Yeah, well, and, and you went to a high school named after a pitcher. Guys, I'll tell you what. Timmy and I actually grew up in the same neighborhood, and I played on the courts over at Fleming Park. They still talk about the Tim Kirkjian oh. jumper down there at Fleming oh. Park. So, I mean, guy had some game, and Fleming it was like park? 60 years later. So, <laughs> What's the name of the park? Fleming Park. Dave, Come Dave got on. it there, too. You're going to be kidding me. <laughs> I worked for the school newspaper at Walter Johnson. It was called The Pitch. <laughs> I did some work for the yearbook. It was called The Wind Up. Oh. Wait, can we get your little dance? Like, is there a way to show that on no, camera? No, we're not going to no. show it. No. No, that's fine. We need to, when he says the word pitch. On the ground is short, and maybe that's yes. one. That's two. Easy. I, that's what I'm talking about. That is beautiful. To be 12 years old and be that seamless making that double play. Tremendous. Tim Kirkchen saved by the double play. <laughs> the Little League World Series is brought to you by T-Mobile. Don't miss the first ever T-Mobile Little League Home Run Derby, August 18th, right here on ESPN. Meeting a member of Team Japan brought to you by Office Depot, and it is the guy who started on the mound, Yuto Kakeba. And Yuto who told us his uh, favorite player is Ichiro Suzuki. He was great on the mound, and he hit maybe the longest home run we've seen hit so far in Williamsport. Power at the plate, power pitching for Team Japan. He is the 12-year-old version right now of Shohei Otani, swinging the bat, launching balls, and then honestly just an ease with his delivery, because when you've got the power and oomph that he's got, he makes it look easy. Good call. Two-way player, the hitter, the pitcher. That's the voice of Jessica Mendoza. By the way, how, how long can you stay with us? I'm heading to Bowman now. I'm right gonna, now? I'm going to jump on the bus with the Cubs. Is this your last uh, sentence with us today? <laughs> no, this is. You no, got to go. Is, oh, no, no, this, no, this wait, one. Wait, one more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jess, you can, you can uh, watch tonight. It is our Sunday night crew. Sunday night baseball, just a little different setting than usual. The Little League Classic at 7 Eastern, Cubs, Pirates. And you guys, I know, are going to have fun with the Little League aspect of it, show a lot of the scenes we've seen today. But also, I mean, as we said, it's a big game. Yeah, we're going to have Batty Frecking in the booth with us, the oh. female 
A girl player that's the only girl that's here since Monet Davis, 19th girl. She's going to come join us in the booth. We did her game the other day. She's five foot six. She's a tall girl. Yep. She plays second base. She's got great feet. She can really move. She pitched. Very pitched impressive. Today. She did. There have been, what, six girls in the history of the Little League World Series to pitch, pitch. like yeah. she did today? Yeah. It's cool to see. She is a it, great it role model. What was even better is I was standing with there with Brian Reynolds from the Pirates, and he's like, whoa, 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 is that a girl pitching? And he, like, stopped everything and started watching her, and he's like, when I played Little League, there was a girl, too. He's like, I never got to face her, though. I always wanted to. And it was, like, so genuine. It was cool. Yeah, what a neat uh, thing that was. So we'll be watching you tonight. And uh, and hope for a great game. No matter what happens, it's, it'll be it's, a really it's a cool win. scene. It's a win. I just love all the, the kids in the stands. <laughs> and honestly, and I'm a parent, but not even seeing their parents there. Just the freedom that they have. I mean, honestly, it's a lot of ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Get the sugar in, take it in a ball game. So you all have to work. See what I have? I have a ticket to I'm the jealous. game. I get to, I get to go as a fan tonight. We could tonight. just switch for like an inning. <laughs> You're sure. I'm sure. That'll go over well. hang with well. Alex and Matt. Yeah. My pals. Pop a squat, get some cotton candy. <laughs> Ryu Shina will hit here for Japan. 5 0, that's the lead for the team from Japan. He's a Shohei Otani fan. Maybe now he'll s switch over to Yu Darvish. Maybe he's met Shohei Otani, but I know he's met Yu Darvish. In a spot where he's showing a bunt, Jesus Garza had to get those cleats tied. Hi. We had a kid for Team Italy who pitched to like Mom. three hitters in a row with his shoes untied and was pitching great. <laughs> and then he he bent over and tied his shoes, and Rossi freaked out. He was like, "No, you, you you're on a roll. You can't. You Don't mess with success. Somebody's got to get a hit before you tie your shoe." That is a bunt right back to the pitcher, no. and they're going to try to go to second. Yes, they got him at second base. Close. Had a sure out at first. He took a chance, and he won on it. Beautiful play. So we loved having Jess with us here for our uh, telecast, and now she'll make her way over across town and uh, get ready for the Sunday night telecast. It'll be uh, Alex and Matt and Jess and Buster, and you'll be a part of the uh, baseball tonight coverage leading into the yeah, game. 5.30 to 7 will lead in, and the home run derby will be on from 4.30 to 5.30, oh. the one that was yesterday. Okay. By the way, we might have a challenge here on that play. Did you have a chance to look at it while I was yammering on? Yeah, it was very close. I think they got him, but um, I would have gone for the sure out at first there. But Maybe when yeah. you're down 5 nothing, right. you're thinking we got to do whatever we can. got to take a chance, to and he made a line. beautiful play on it. So video replay here in Williamsport. Force outs, tags on the base pass, miss bases, and hit batters. A little simpler than replay at the big league level. Mm -hmm. And the ball hits the glove. I think he's out. He's definitely out. And they're not going to overturn that. No. So that was a, it turned into a terrific play. Very good. That's what they say in the big leagues, right? If you're going to take a risk like right, that, right. you better get him. Right. Keep keep people out of scoring position. Keep the double play in order. Great idea. So, not a sacrifice bunt. Turns into just a fielder's choice. We get a runner at first base. Dave, every year I come here, I'm so impressed with how many of these kids stand right on top of the plate. Me too. They do not bail. They step right at the pitcher. Fear of the ball at this level, at this age, is real. For most of the kids in our country, anywhere. And look at that swing with a guy standing right on top of the plate. No, Joe Nishizawa hits a liner that's caught for out number two. And if you can get a 12-year-old to go up there with real courage, you got a chance because most of the kids at this age get hit with a ball once in a while and say, Ugh, that's not real comfortable. These kids are fearless, and I've been impressed every game I see. Jerks and Profar's brother, I'm, I'm chuckling, not because it was funny, but because the, the kid ended up being fine. 
and he clearly did not do it on purpose. He threw a 74-mile-an-hour fastball that hit an 80-pound kid from South Korea square in the middle of the back, and the kid just shrugged it off and jogged to first and maybe rubbed it for a second and then said, I'm good. <laughs> well, uh, Yuta Kashima, who is hitting here, he, he's almost on top of the plate. To your point. Right. And there'll be a mark on that kid's back for the next three weeks. Correct. At least. But he's a tough kid. All these kids are. You're not going to make it to this level without being a tough kid. There are two things about baseball for kids and trying to teach kids baseball at this age. Number one, it's really hard. It's uh. hard to get good at it. It takes time. It takes a lot of practice. And number two, it can hurt. I'm a big believer, Dave, we should use a softer ball until our kids learn how to play, yep. until they learn how to catch it. Because if you use a rock-hard ball and a kid doesn't know how to play, doesn't know how to get out of the way of a pitch, gets hit in the, in the chin with a ground ball, he's not coming back tomorrow. Yep. If we can teach them the skills first and then move to a harder baseball later, I think that's the way to go. I think it's a great idea. Show of a bunt. And then take a strike. My son's nine. He's a good little ball player. He can play. But when we play catch, it's with a, a softer ball. Just for that reason, hey, maybe dad lets one go and gets away from me. Uh, you can get the practice in using that softer ball. It works just fine. That's ball four. Dave, if I were in charge of this at early ages, I would have a cage on every batting helmet. Also agree. Just in case. He gets hit in the face with a pitch. He's never coming back. And if we can just protect him until he learns how to protect himself, why wouldn't we try that? And when you take it out of the a lot of kids, if you give them the option, if their friends aren't doing it, they're not going to do it. If you just say, hey, we're doing it's this. It's mandatory. Have to do it. Let's go. Kids would adjust. That would be an easy one, I think. Daiki Kobari with two on and two out. Ball. Takes ball one from Jesus Garza. 5 nothing Japan. We're in the bottom of the fourth. <laughs> Angel Castillo, he loves to throw. <laughs> I love both our catchers. Yep. Both of them can really throw, and they love playing the position. Right there on the inside, one and one. All right, so we were talking about tonight's game and uh, and the role you'll have, and Jess is headed there now to, to get ready for Sunday Night Baseball, Cubs and Pirates. You, it, what do you think about the Cubs and where they sit in the, in the pennant race in the National League? Well, they better get that bullpen fixed or else they might not make the playoffs. The reason I still like them for the playoffs is that lineup is good. Their starting pitching is really good, good and it's led right now by Hugh Darvish. That one is hit high into right center field and deep. Sebastian Sauceda all the way back to catch. make the catch. Tremendous play for out number three. I've been watching these outfielders are playing very shallow. That ball was hit over his head into the sun, and he ran that down. That is definitely one of the best outfield catches we've seen so far this year. Because all, right, all the stuff that you're talking about was in play. He had a long way to go. The sun is bright. The stage is big. No problem for Sebastian. You know, we sometimes tease him. He's like America's uh, most versatile celebrity, David Ross. He America's does a little guest, bit of, David he Ross. He does a little bit of everything. He was the tour guide for a lot of his old pals today. Uh, he, he was showing Joe Madden around. The race was no contest, by the way. I can't wait to get on him about that. Rizzo just dusted him. It looked like he was slowing himself down with his own feet. Uh, yeah, Rossi, he, Mr. Enthusiasm, too. He was describing going down that hill to a lot of his old pals. Look at all the autographs that the kids around here got. 5 nothing Japan, top of the fifth. Double elimination tournament. Both these teams are still alive no matter what happens, but it puts you in such an advantageous position if you win your first two games. And that's what Japan is trying to do. And of course, Japan has outscored their opponents so far 25 to nothing. Correct. And it is, they are a very precise team as we watch in everything that they do. They have not given up a run yet in the Little League World Series. The competition will ramp up a little bit. Maybe Joe Nishizawa helped his pitcher get a strike there. Right. And I like it, Dave, that the strike zone's a little bigger yes. here. 
You I know agree. what it does? It forces the kids to swing the bat. I have a college coach friend of mine, Scott Bradley, who tells me that the one thing he hates to hear for a really young kid is, good eye, you've got a good eye. He wants him to swing the bat. When you get older, you can develop plate discipline. You can figure out what's a ball and a strike. But you want a 7-year-old swinging the bat. You want a 12-year-old up there hacking away. Then we'll figure out where the strike zone is. Or if you're as talented as Javi Baez, you can just keep swinging. Of course. <laughs> a strike and a beautiful pitch there for out number one. Well, catch all the excitement from all of the seven Little League World Series tournaments, including visitor information, scores, stats, video highlights, and more. Visit littleleague.org as the Cubs, as a group, start to head back down the hill. Kyle Hendricks, John Lester, both those guys having uh, great years for the Cubs. And they will get on board the buses, drive across town, stop at a few stoplights along the way. And then they will be uh, in prep mode to get ready for tonight's Little League Classic. And it's like Anthony Rizzo said, we're professionals. Yep. You have to turn the switch to yeah. get over there, and the kids are gone. We're going to go try to win a game tonight. We're going to ask our uh, police escort this time. Maybe maybe we could get in that right lane and get through that traffic light a little quicker <laughs> in case you missed it. We had, we had an, over shot, an overhead shot of the uh, Pirates on their way to Bowman Field just dead stopped at a traffic light in all this traffic. I'm sure they made it just fine. But no Major League Baseball player would complain about that, of course. Oh, no, I'm sure it was quiet on that bus. One and two. With one out, Marcelo Herrera, who started the game as the pitcher, well, I, you know what? Maybe some of those players will have a chance to come back here and do this again. Well, for a lot of them, this will probably be the only time that they come and participate in this. I don't think it's an exaggeration, Tim, to say that those guys, as they file out of here, are never going to forget this day. Right. Some of them aren't sure what they're getting into. And I promise you, everyone leaves saying, that was even better than I thought it was going to be. That's my history with the players who've never been here and their experiences here. 2-2 and a hard hit oh. ball. Stopped in the hole. It's short. One bounce, two bounces, and just a little offline. So that should go down as a hit for Marcelo Herrera. He hit that hard. That was a rocket for him to stay in front of that ball. Again, the courage of these 12-year-old kids. That ball was smoked. And he doesn't side saddle this. He gets right in front of it. He lost his feet a little bit on that. It would have been a close play anyway, but that's a knock. Kazuhiro Kishi, Kishikawa, who's 12 years old, as Tim said, and they they talk about him. He's he's one of the smallest kids on this team, Japan, but they really love his defense. They think he, as he grows and gets stronger, is going to be a real high-level defensive player. Jason Hayward, I, he looked to me like he was having a great time with the kids. Eric Vigil is the hitter as pinch hitter for Team Mexico. They, they scored that as an error, by the way, Tim, which what I do here in Williamsport when I disagree, I just put it down as a hit. I don't care. I'm, I'm my own official score. That's a knock. Yes. That's a deep, it's a play deep in the hole. That is not routine effort. No. That one scooted away after the uh, foul. So it's 0-2. Castellanos has been a great addition for the Cubs. Oh, they've changed the ruling. See, we have some influence around here, Tim. It's well, a they're obviously listening to the broadcast. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. So it, that was a hit, and deservedly so. I also think if it's even close at this level, particularly in this tournament, the kid wants to go home and say, I got a hit in the Little League World Series. Let's default to a hit. Of course. Yeah. That doesn't seem to be too tough. Eugenio Hernandez takes a good swing as a pinch hitter. And Dave, there's a lesson here for all the little kids we see out here. Yep. This sport is open to yes. all shapes and sizes. It's one of the great beauties of the sport is that two years ago, yes. Aaron Judge and Jose Altuve were one and two in the MVP race. One is 6'7", the other is 5'6". It's what makes the game so great. If you have the skills to play it, you can play it. You can be fast, but you don't have to be fast. You can be big, but you don't have to be big. 
You can throw hard, but you don't have to throw hard. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways to contribute to a baseball team. And it is. It's, it's, I, for me, it's the best part about this sport. And we had a kid in the home run derby yesterday. Nate weighed 120 pounds, and he hit rocket shots to all over the field. There were kids against him who weighed 70 pounds more than him, and he was just as strong because his hands and the technique of his swing were beautiful. Three strikeouts in the inning for Japan, and we will go to the bottom of the fifth. Japan's three outs away from a victory. The Cubs hoping for a victory tonight over at Bowman Field. It's going to hit for Japan in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah. Mr. Home Run, Yuto Kakeba, who has driven in six runs in two games so far. So the Cubs are off and rolling. They head across town to Bowman Field. That's where Tim will be and the rest of our Sunday night crew tonight. Dave, there were three kids in the home run derby yesterday that's big, that were bigger than this kid. He's 5'6", 182. Wow. So I asked the biggest kid, like, when was the last time you were my size? 5'5", five, five, 145. He thought about it. He goes, second grade. Well, <laughs> And I bet he could hit it a long way. He did. He hit blast after blast. And that kid can hit right there, too. Yes, he can. He is going to be a force in this Little League World Series. So Yuto Kakeba. You know, it's funny. He bats cleanup. Team Japan has a little different idea. The team from South Korea puts their best hitter, best power hitter, right at the top of the order. Curacao sort of does the same thing. Uh, some of the U.S. teams have that idea. There's different ways to build a lineup at this level. That one hit to short, and the throw got him at second base. Now Japan may well, terrific play by the one. shortstop, but I think he's safe at second. And I if they so. replay this, uh, we may have a change. The universal sign for we want a video review. Yeah, I think the uh, foot hit the bag before the ball hit the glove. But it was the shortstop's only play, did the yep. best he could. And a beautiful play at that. That was the only chance. That should be a hit. But that's a big kid running from first base, getting to second, showing he understands. Got to get to the next base. So the out call at second base is officially now being reviewed. A uh, challenge from Team Japan. Chofu City Little League. Chofu Little League won the Little League World Series 43 years ago, back in 1976. The last time they were here, they did not have a great Little League World Series. It's one of the, the most disappointing of any team from Japan ever in Williamsport. And that was a focus for Koji Yamashita, the manager who has been a coach in baseball in Japan for many, many years. He's a delightful guy, but part of his his nervousness coming into this week was, hey, last time we were here, it didn't go as well as we wanted. Yeah, they're a little spoiled in Japan. They are. Yes, they are. I watched him hit infield today, Dave, and that was beautiful. I mean, the way he could hit a pop-up to an infielder, yep. a perfect fly ball to an outfielder, and a pop-up, foul pop-up to a catcher, that's not easy to do. He is a really skilled with a fungo. The the uh, kids benefit from all that practice, and, and the fungo hitters do too. too. He's really a, a wonderful guy. So I think they they have now taken the looks that they need with that call at second base and safe. So they overturn the call. Japan's got two on <laughs> with no outs, and the kids are happy. And again, this is not important, but the official scorer has to make a decision there. Could he have thrown that guy out at first if he had thrown it there? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. That kid runs really well. If I'm the official scorer, I'd give him a hit on Me that. too. He made the, And there was no mistake made by the shortstop. He made the play cleanly. He made a good throw. That's a hit. He, right. he did what he could. And the fielder's choice was, I can't throw that guy out at first. got to go to the closest yep. back. So uh, they do give a hit. Good. Still listening to the broadcast. Of course they are. Yuto Misaki swings at that first pitch, hits a foul ball. Yuto wears that number 18, which in Japan 
often is the traditional number given to the number one pitcher, the ace pitcher, and Utah is a very good pitcher. Cristiano Ronaldo, they play a lot of soccer in Japan. That ball bounced in the dirt. A special pinch runner now replaced Kakeba at second base. Kensuke Sekiai. I saw one of the bios that one of the kids plays football. Now again, pardon my ignorance here. Do they play football in Japan? They do a little bit. That ball hit on the ground, picked beautifully at third. That's one out, the throw all the way across, not quite in time. So out number one, first and second with one out. The journey to the Little League World Series starts in T-Ball. Visit littleleague.org slash T-Ball to learn how to give the youngest Little Leaguers the opportunity to have fun and learn the game. Tim, I was in Tokyo this March with ESPN for the opening series, the Japan series, the A's and the Mariners, where Ichiro played his final Major League games. It was an incredible experience. And right near where we stayed, right in the heart of Tokyo, there's a dirt field, no grass, all dirt, and there were kids playing American football. Really? Uh, there was an American football practice going on every day, right in the middle of Tokyo. To answer your question, I've seen it with my own eyes. That ball, a foul off the foot of Taishi Kawaguchi. Well, I think that's great. And as we talked about earlier, Dave, the more sports, yep. the better. It will make you better at every other sport. Football, the skills required there, soccer especially, basketball, footwork, it's going to make you better in baseball. I tell every kid, put a bat and ball down in December and go make the, ba the basketball team. It's good for you. Yep. 0-2. That ball popped up behind shortstop. Another one of those tough plays, and it's going to fall. So just a little blue pit. The bases are loaded for Japan. Left fielder was playing much more shallow on that play. Shortstop heard him coming a little bit. Ball's over his head. Difficult play. Sun in his eyes. Bases loaded here. And it is interesting. The, the kids here do get a lot of gear. And uh, that includes sunglasses, but the, the, these uh, kids from Mexico, not most of them are not wearing sunglasses out on the field. Whether that would make a difference or not, I don't know. Beautiful pick there by Castillo, the catcher. Again, he's really good back he there. Is. And Mexico's championship hopes are not gone if they lose this game. It's tougher, that's for sure. You gotta play sooner, like tomorrow. So that taxes your pitching. Among the many advantages in a double elimination tournament of staving off that loss for as long as possible is you get more rest days, more chances to reset your pitching staff. So it's a huge factor here at the Little League level. 2-0. Nowhere to put the hitter, Aruto Owada. 3-0. That throw, man, he almost picked him off. <laughs> you better be heads up on the bases with Angel Castillo behind the plate. He's got a right-handed hitter up there. He threw around him to try to pick a guy off third. Don't see it very often. And did you see how upset right. Castillo was? And he said, let's get a replay on this. I think he was mad at his third baseman for not being, being there. Being there. They might have run a little play on that. Hey, be ready for me. I think he was. There's a strike. <laughs> Angel is, <laughs> he is not messing around behind home plate. Got to throw a strike here, 3-1. And it's a foul ball for strike two. On a summertime day in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, it's, it's finally calmed down here a little bit now that the big leaguers are off across town getting ready for their game. Right back to the pitcher. That's an out, and Castillo shows off the arm. What a throw. <laughs> Well, if you want to know how to make the one, two, three, you watch that catcher right there. Watch where he receives this ball. Perfect spot on the plate. He knows where to catch this, and then he knows he's got to move to the inside of the baseline in order not to have the runner in the way. Beautiful play by Castillo. We're certainly having fun here in Williamsport today, led by their manager. But it wasn't only the manager. Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, and more decided they needed to go down that darn hill.
managers, star players, gold glovers. <laughs> uh, Gotta one, love it. You, you have a guess as to which one. Maybe they'll do a little contest on SportsCenter tonight following the Sunday night game as to which slide was the best slide. Right. And I vote that Rossi's was the worst slide, okay? I, if we show that one on SportsCenter, we've done something wrong. Sports Center after Cubs Pirates tonight. Last chance here for Mexico. We're in the top of the six. It's 5 nothing Japan. And the uh, Japanese team brings in essentially their closer, Yuto Misaki. He wears that number 18. He gets the big swing and miss from Emiliano Ondarza. And his bio says, I want to grow up and either be a major league player or an accountant, which was Freddie Freeman's journey in life. He was going to be an accountant until he got drafted. And he said, all right, I'll be a baseball player instead. Amazing. Literally always thought that's what he would right, be. Right, because his dad's an accountant. I think Freddie made the right choice. I, I totally agree. Just missing. They thought they had him. Emilio's going to do my taxes this year. I've already talked to him. So really? Yeah. Oh. Does he charge a reasonable fee? He's, uh, he's going to do it for free. <laughs> he's just that big of a yeah. baseball fan. Wow. Hard to account for that velocity. 70 miles an hour. And blew him away. Little League would like to ex extend a special thank you to its official sponsors like Dick Sporting Goods, who helped to maintain the strength and leadership of the Little League program. Little League would also like to thank its dedicated volunteers who make the program a special experience for millions of children. Thank you from us, too. Elliot Sanchez. So he can throw 70-plus. Then he's got the breaking ball. And he throws an 0-0 breaking ball. Yeah. And you're a hitter looking for 70. You can't hit that. It's too hard. Hey, these kids are watching the big leagues. That's what we see at the major league level every day. Right. The games I've seen so far, there are no fastball counts <laughs> in the big leagues. And sometimes not even here. Not even here. Grounder foul. So the count is one and two. And Dave, look how shallow the outfielders are playing for Japan here. Yeah. Again, this is part of it. Forcing the action. Go ahead. Try to hit it over our head. But you're not going to bloop one in front of us. And clearly they're good on going back on the ball because I watched them in infield. That coach hit it over their head and said, go, go catch this thing. Foul tip held on by the catcher, Joe Nishikazawa, for out number two. And we've got some pretty good power pitching going today for Japan. Yes. And they will have all their pitching saved up and ready to go for the next time they play on Wednesday. I think it's a trend. If, if folks are watching us now who are going to be with us all week long, Championship Sunday, one week from today, to crown the Little League World Series champion. First pitch strike. Kids are no longer 13 here. The age has changed. There are no 13-year-olds. That eliminates a lot of the biggest, strongest kids. And the bat standards have changed in the last two years to act more like wood bats. And because of that, we're not seeing the same kind of home run power that we're used to seeing here in Williamsport. And so it's a trend for everybody. Outfielders playing a little more shallow. you got to execute and do those little things to win games. So it's a little bit more about skill yeah, than power now. It is. Maybe the big leagues could take a lesson <laughs> from this. Maybe we should have a few more balls in play and let our fielders show their magical skills, especially in the middle infield. Look at the Japanese pitching, by the way. Those numbers, 21 strikeouts. They still have not walked a hitter in Williamsport. So total two games, almost 11 innings, only five hits, no walks. And Dave, how many 12-year-olds do we know in our lives who can't throw a strike? These many. kids throw all strikes. All strikes. As soon as we were saying that, it went to 3-1. and one. I was thinking, oh, great, here we go. <laughs> Way to go. They're, now the players are listening to the broadcast. But he pumped one right in there. So a full count, three and two. Mexico down to their final strike here today. And the three-two pitch is right there for strike three called. Wow, what a performance for Team Japan. And a smile for Yuto Misaki. And Japan improves to 2-0 and in this Little League World Series. They met you, Darvish. They got him to sign their flag. They played a great game. This is the American dream right here. It is. It really, really is. 
really terrific performance. The fifth time that they have started in Williamsport with back-to-back, -back, not just wins, they've done that more than five times, but back-to-back -back shutouts. So the teams will greet each other, shake hands, high fives after the game. Dave, it's not just back-to-back -back shutouts. They beat a really good yep, Mexico team did. today. And well, like we just said, no walks in and 22 strikeouts in two Little League games. That's, that's stunning. Basically 100% clean defense. So you, you pick it clean, you throw strikes, you don't walk anybody. And that is a formula at any level for success. I love how they do this. They go over to the visiting side in front of the fans of Mexico. And two, at least two, exceptional defensive plays by Japan and almost no sloppy play whatsoever. Again, for a 12-year-old, that is remarkable. So now the moms and the dads and the, the friends and family, they get ready for the kids to line up on the Japan side of this volunteer field. Take a bow. <laughs> well earned. That is great. Yeah. They love this game. They love to play. They love to practice. They love to watch. And a very big game and a tough one to predict. Both teams are going to have all their pitching available on Wednesday, 3 Eastern, right here on ESPN on the international side. South Korea and Japan. And, uh, Tim, look, I, I mean, we, we like to think we know this sport. We know this game. And we've watched uh, each of those teams play two games now. But... Uh, I challenge you to predict what's going to happen there because uh, we just have some tremendously high quality across the board at the Little League World Series. But if those are the two best teams this year on the international side, they're really good. And I say this every year I come here. The skill level is what dazzles me. Look, you can be a big kid and overpower the game at this age. But when you see kids with the skills, especially in the middle infield that we've seen, that's the part that is so impressive to me, and that's what keeps me going as a baseball guy, is to see our young kids this far along defensively, especially. All right, so you win a game. You haven't given up a run. You haven't walked anybody. What do we do? Well, we're still going to get a little work in. Let's stretch to cool down. There is a routine. Oh, and the routine is routine because they do it every single day. They will be up, I guarantee you, early tomorrow for some more practice. They've got two more days to wait before their uh, next game against South Korea. Looking back on our uh, day today, it got started for Japan in the second inning. Their cleanup hitter, Yuto Kakeba, maybe the longest home run we've seen. And that's 5'6", 182 pounds with a beautiful swing. No stride. That ball is up in the strike zone. That is a hard ball to get to, and he got to it easily. And, of course, he's throwing strikes, he's throwing hard, and he's moving it around the strike zone. So he was the hitting and pitching star in a lot of ways. And uh, Yuto Misaki was the closer. And all he did was strike out the side for the final three outs. So Japan uh, just tremendously impressive again against a good Mexican team. Three hits, no walks, no runs, 12 combined strikeouts. Well, just another terrific day here at the Little League World Series. But, Dave, as we know, the most important thing about today is the interaction yep. between the players from the major leagues, in this case the Cubs and the Pirates, and the Little Leaguers. They'll never forget this day, these Little Leaguers, and the major leaguers will never forget this day. To repeat, earlier in the day, Chris Archer was on the bus coming in, talking to all the kids, and one of the kids said to him, Hey, you're the guy that gives up all the home runs, aren't you? Uh too good and the players you know not only did all that interacting they also participated in the pregame ceremonies so the, the starting lineups the teams were introduced and the Pirates were uh, ready with the high five line taking a picture on the mound we, we also saw you know we, we've showed already that the Cubs sliding down the hill Chris Archer was playing catch with some kids from Team Mexico. I saw Felipe Vasquez take the mound here at Volunteer. Josh Bell sort of mimed in the batter's box like he was a hitter. It was just so cool. The two of them had huge smiles on their faces like, man, I don't want to be that close to Josh Bell on the mound. Right, and this happens every year. Last year I was here with Jake Arietta, and he didn't have to do this, but he sat in the stands over in Lomedy yeah. for two hours surrounded by kids, and he had a baseball in his hand, and he's showing them. 
this has this is how I throw a four seamer. This is what I do with my cutter. And the kids were like mesmerized. A former Cy Young winner is showing us the intricacies of throwing a baseball. This is exactly what you were talking right. about. This was this was tremendous. And he couldn't have been happier to do this. And it's in part because he has children and he knows eventually they're gonna be this age. And what a great thing it would be to be a 12-year-old being taught by a former Cy Young winner. Well, that, that, is, that is just my favorite thing. It's, you, you, uh, can you imagine that kid got a private pitching lesson from a Cy Young winner, Jake Arrieta? Noah Syndergaard was doing the same thing uh, last year. Anthony Rizzo was talking to those kids on the bus ride. Anthony made the kids sing their national anthem, anthem. on the bus ride in. Uh, the Pirates and the Cubs both did a great job. I went in on the Phillies bus last year, and Reese Hoskins was in a dance contest with one of the kids, <laughs> who dusted him, by the way. The kids could dance way better than any adults can, but that's part of it. And again, Chris Archer had the best day today, I promise you. He was. He told me he was looking forward to this more than anything, and not just the game, of course, Williamsport and the connection to the kids. I think they were sharing. I don't know if he was sharing his cell phone number with some of the kids. Who knows? I wouldn't put it past Chris or a lot of these guys for doing it, but they were taking photos and interacting with one another. And Right, and I think my takeaway is going to be those Cubs going down the hill. I mean, not yeah. because it's mildly dangerous, but I think it's Joe Madden setting the tone for that team that we're going to have a little fun, rest over relaxation, let's get your mind off of baseball once in a while, and let's take this whole thing in. Beautiful. We did ask Anthony Rizzo if Theo texted him afterwards. He said no. I don't know if he was telling the truth. Maybe after the fifth or sixth Cub All-Star was sliding down the hill, maybe then the text message started I think started Theo knows his team well enough that he's not going to stop them from doing what they want to do. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Oh, look, that this ballpark tonight is wonderful. Forget that there are 2,500 people only that can sit there. First off, they're all going to be kids. It's a beautiful playing surface. It's a big league park as far as size goes. It's a real major league game tonight. I just looked at my watch. you got to go. Get ready for the yeah, show. Yeah, I've got baseball tonight, tonight. And, again, we've got the kids' home run derby. That was a blast. So, <laughs> so great day here in Williamsport. Slippery Stairs is coming up next. Don't. <laughs> slip on your way to Bowman no, Field, please. No chance of doing that. 5 nothing. Japan wins.